Folks, welcome to the video on brachial plexus injury treatment. If you're watching this video, you're probably feeling the same way, like a headless chicken searching for information because your doctor, your physiotherapist, and the people you asked knew absolutely nothing about this injury. You probably belong to one of the two types of patients who either fell off a motorcycle or had another accident and lost arm strength and then felt completely lost. <laughs> One of them is the one who had an injury from a motorcycle fall. It was an injury that impacted more. The arm region lost strength. And then, in the hospital, they investigated, ordered a CT scan, saw that there was a lack of strength, thought it was due to pain, called someone who said, look, I think it's a brachial plexus injury. That's why the arm isn't moving. There's nothing serious. You can discharge him. And then he consults a doctor later. So this is one type of patient. And the other is the one who has a very serious injury, who goes to the ICU, has a hip fracture, a humerus fracture, a chest strain, and is in a coma. And the doctors say the following. That arm injury there is the least of the problems right now. First, we have to save his life, and then we worry about the arm. And then you start getting better, remove the drain, start talking again, start moving. The arm doesn't return to normal, and they say, now I'm going to discharge you, and then you go to another doctor to sort it out. And then you wait for the much anticipated day to consult with that specialist doctor in plexus injury who will be able to solve your problem. And during the consultation, you get a cold shower. He comes to you, looks at your arm and seems a bit unsure. He says, I think it looks like a brachial plexus injury. I'll order some tests to see. Folks, this video is extremely important so you don't end up lost like this, going back and forth and being discouraged by bad information. Probably this doctor said in this way, that's how you're going to stay. Bury that arm because there is nothing to be done. It's not like that. Almost all the patients I treated for brachial plexus injury were discouraged in the first consultation. So, this is an extremely important video for you to find good professionals, find good physiotherapists, and truly know what the treatment for your injury is. Stay until the end because I will give some tips that are essential for you. The first tip is don't listen to incorrect information. You will search on the internet for people who underwent incorrect treatments. You will find doctors who will tell you that it's no use, that you will remain like this, that surgery is pointless. This is wrong. In fact, I post many patients here who had surgery and improved. Of course, the person will not return to what they were before, as they had a severe nerve injury. However, you can improve a lot from where you are today at home. Do not neglect to undergo the correct treatment. Time is very important. Which doctors should you seek out? who will likely be able to help you with your injury. One of them is my specialty, which is the neurosurgeon who works in the area of peripheral nerves. The other doctor is the hand surgeon who performs peripheral nerve surgeries. In some rarer cases, it is the plastic surgeon who performs microsurgery. In the United States, most doctors who operate on the brachial plexus are plastic surgeons. Here in Brazil, most are neurosurgeons and hand surgeons. But regardless of their training, some say, oh, the neurosurgeon operates better, or the hand surgeon operates better. No, both operate equally well. The most important thing is who actually works in this area. So, you look for this doctor, if he performs this type of surgery frequently, if he has other patients who have undergone it whom you can talk to, if there are people in groups commenting that he is a good doctor who have had surgery with him and had a good outcome, that is the key to success. It's no use taking your imported car to a motorcycle shop. Why? Because they won't know what to do. You might even say they'll find a way, but in the end, you know they won't. And after you've had the surgery, it's very sad to find out you chose the wrong doctor. Therefore, seek good specialists. After finding this doctor, he will request some tests to understand the extent of your injury, whether it is mild, more severe, or if there has been avulsion of several nerves. We have videos here talking about what an avulsion is, or if you will recover on your own and don't need surgery. Milder cases where the patient, after a few days, begins to fully regain arm movement are extremely rare in adult plexus injuries. Unfortunately, this is a truth. More than 90% of people who have a brachial plexus injury after a motorcycle fall will need surgery. Therefore, if you are a patient, uh, I've improved this shoulder movement. This shoulder movement is not from a plexus nerve. Even if it is working, it doesn't mean you won't need surgery. 
Ah, uh, I've improved hand movement, but my arm is drooping. I don't have the strength to bend the elbow or lift the shoulder. Even so, you might need surgery, and the chances are high. Because imagine that the nerve regenerated to your hand, but didn't allow the biceps and shoulder to function. The biceps and shoulder are larger muscles, and they come before the hand movements. So probably the nerves of the shoulder and biceps were injured more significantly. Stay alert. Don't let a piece of information in your head or something someone said incorrectly influence your final outcome. I see some patients who suddenly come after two years. Oh, doctor, I did physical therapy. The doctor I consulted said it would get better on its own. I kept doing the therapy, thinking it would improve. My hand recovered, but my elbow stays in my pocket. My hand recovered, but my elbow stays in my pocket. Well, after two years, what we can do is very little compared to what the patient can gain if operated on within six months. So oh, do physical therapy, consult with the doctor, get the examination because this will make a big difference and plan. If suddenly, by six months, there is no movement gained in the elbow, I will have surgery. That's a plan. Let's do it in physical therapy. Come back here in eight months. But doctor, if by any chance my movement doesn't return in eight months, what are we going to do? We'll see later. Not we'll see later. We need to think about what we're going to do. We need to have a plan. And if it improves, this plan might be extended. So let's wait. No, if it doesn't improve by a certain day, surgery will be needed. And that makes us feel much more secure when leaving a doctor's office. So seek, again, we return to the previous tip, seek a good doctor, a good specialist. Physical therapy is extremely important after the injury. Some patients leave the emergency room with a sling, keeping their arm immobilized there, fearing a nerve injury. And then after six months, when you try to remove the sling, the arm remains stuck in that position, it becomes stiff. Because of how long it stayed like that. Pay attention. Our joints need movement. If we keep them still in the same position, because the muscle doesn't move because you stayed in the sling, your hand will become stiff, your shoulder will become stiff, and even if you regain movement after the surgery, your result won't be good. There's no reason to keep the sling on. 24 hours. You can wear the sling to leave the house, to go for a walk, or because it makes you feel comfortable, that's fine. But you need to take it off and do stretches. We have videos here on the channel. We have information on my website about which stretches we can do to prevent the joints from becoming stiff. And you need to do them because this is extremely important for your recovery. Oh, doctor, but I went to the physio and the physio stretches me. That's fine, but physiotherapy stretches you for only a few minutes, two or three times a week at most. Stretching and joint movements need to be done every day. So stretch, stretch your hand, stretch your arm. This is extremely important. Remember, we talked about having some types of patients when they have an injury. We also have some types of patients who will need surgery. There is that patient who has a very severe injury, who has no movement in any part of the arm, neither the hand, nor the elbow, nor the shoulder, and their arm is completely limp. And we have that patient who has a partial injury. They have movement in the hand and sometimes some movement in the elbow. The physiotherapy for these two patients is very different. For the one with a complete injury, unfortunately, the most important treatment is surgery. They need to re the muscles as quickly as possible. So, their physiotherapy is more about stretching, release, and pain management. Because nothing is innovated, so they need to undergo surgery. The patient who has some movement can indeed benefit much more from rehabilitation. Especially by strengthening the muscles that are good, meaning to gain more strength from them, and even facilitate their use in surgery to recover other movements. So, we call this strengthening of donor muscles. If you have some arm movement and you plan to have surgery in the future, do not neglect your rehabilitation. It is extremely important. Dr. Thomas, so I will have my surgery in about a year because I will try rehabilitation first. Folks, the surgery should be done as soon as possible. When, oh, three months, six months, eight months. No, there is no exact science. Each patient is different. What we know is that if you are going to need surgery, meaning from a certain point, you will no longer gain strength. That is the most important moment for you to operate. So I have improved my hand movement a lot, but I still can't bend my elbow. And I am sure it won't improve anymore because my exam showed no sign of reinnervation, as the doctor already waited one, two months, and there was no improvement in that muscle, and my condition has stabilized. 
so you need to operate soon. Why? Because your muscle starts to atrophy, and if you take too long, then there won't be any response. It's no use operating with the best doctor in the world, and then you operate it after two years. By the time the nerve reaches the muscle, there's no muscle left to innervate, and the surgery won't work. So, the sooner, the better. Of course, we won't perform surgery on someone who will improve on their own. So, we have to be sure that there won't be a response from that point on. That's why having follow-up with a good professional is very important. Now, a brief overview of how the surgery works, because we will talk about the surgery in another video here on the channel. But the procedure is done under general anesthesia. You stay in the hospital for one day, and after the surgery, you will leave with a sling, with your arm immobilized. Now, yes, the sling is extremely important and you cannot remove it from your arm. Why? Because if you stretch your arm, you lose the stitching we did on the nerve. So, for 21 days post-surgery, unfortunately, you will have to wear the sling. And if I... Your joints will become stiffer, so stretch before having this surgery, so you arrive with them nice and loose. And then you won't lose all the stretching you did. All right? And then, after the surgery, the treatment is physical therapy and rehabilitation. What I tell everyone is this, you had surgery with doctor. Thomas, so you're going to wait, and in six months, you wake up in the morning and say, look, my arm started working again, doctor. Thomas was really good, right? Well, it's not like that, no. If it were, I wish, people would come from everywhere to have surgery with me. Some do come, but I don't perform those miracles, no. So, my difference today is that I talk to my patient and uh, explain to them. You need to do the movement, you need to strengthen, and you need to achieve each movement. You won't wake up one morning and suddenly your arm will move on its own. You'll discover that it's moving when you try to make that movement there. And then it will be something very small. Then, later, it will generate a stronger movement. Then you'll be able to overcome gravity, but you won't have strength. And finally, you'll have strength and also overcome gravity. All of this, we are talking about six months, one year, up to two, three years after the surgery. So, a patient who dedicates a lot in the post-operative period compared to a patient who doesn't dedicate at all will have a much better result. I hope you have understood the treatment. I hope this video, enjoy your ups and downs. And may your path, which was once bumpy and all over the place, have now moved in a straight line from here on. And if you like this video and it helped you in some way, even if I'm not your doctor, I want you to like it and share it with more people who are going through the same as you, so that they too can have a better quality and a better outcome at the end of this treatment. See you soon.